The U.S. will soon have its first over-the-counter birth control pill. It's called O-Pill and will be sold in drugstores and online without a prescription. Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin joins us to talk a little more about this. Good morning, Beth. How are you today? And good morning, Amanda. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, so first off, do we know when this medication will be available? So uh, Perigo, which is the company that uh, manufactures Opel, has said only uh, early 2024. So early next year is likely when we're going to see a rollout where it's actually going to be uh, available in stores. As far as how the medication is taken, Beth, uh, do I, I'm going to make the assumption that it's that it's a pill. Is there any difference in how? A birth control medication is is given to someone with a prescription. It is, there is not really a difference, Amanda. So um, this is a daily pill, just uh, like similar birth control pills. It's a progestin-based pill, um, similar to some that are already on the market and have been on the market, you know, for 50-something years. So the idea is that you would take the pill every day and you'd take it at the same time uh, of day, you know, just to have that consistency. Um, and, you know, there are similar side effects to, you know, uh, other birth control pills. But it is generally pretty, experts say, pretty well tolerated. And in the studies, people who were involved in the studies were able to read the directions, understand the directions, follow the directions pretty well, according to the FDA. They were satisfied enough to feel that, you know, this could safely be rolled out as a medication that you get without needing to go see the doctor, without needing to go, you know, have it filled by a pharmacist. You could just go to the drugstore, even the convenience store. Now, once it's ready and pick it up. Uh, and, and Beth, I don't know if you can answer this question, but is there an age limit on this? So we don't know that there's going to be an age limit on this. I would imagine, you know, that that hasn't been worked out yet. Uh, I know that, you know, younger women uh, tend to get their birth control, uh, at least access it at first, through um, a drugstore. Um, you know, so condoms, uh, spermicide, that kind of thing. Those are much easier to get, but they're also less effective. So this would be the first time we have a highly effective, in this case, the prescription version of this, 93% effective at preventing pregnancy. This would be the first time, Amanda, that we'd actually, you know, younger people would have access to something that works, you know, really well compared to some of the other birth control options. Right, as opposed to uh, me taking my daughter to her gynecologist for the first time and having her put on a prescription uh, medication, right. you know, by me, by mom, mom making the decision for uh, for, for the, for the yes. minor. Yes, and you know, there are questions, and, and, and obviously it's, it's critically important that you know women have access to care and women are seeing their doctors or their health care providers and, and, and heeding their advice but I think there's also you know a disparity in this country there's a, you know people struggle sometimes to get access to a doctor you know to get access to a health care provider this may help fill that gap because if you look at the pregnancies we have six million pregnancies a year half of them are unintended according to the FDA so you know this may may drive down those numbers. And Beth, do you think that is the reason why so many women out there are very interested that this is the draw to the uh, over-the-counter pill? Yeah, I think so. You know, Kaiser Family Foundation does a lot of polls and they did a poll about, you know, an over-the-counter uh, birth control pill and they found that three-fourths of women who answered the poll you know said that they would be interested in this or they were in favor of a non-prescription birth control pill and about 40 percent say they would look into possibly using this product so you know I think it is really an issue of access but I think also you know this is something that has been sort of in discussion for, for years with uh, proponents of it saying you know women have a hard time getting to a doctor, you know, uninsured women, you know, getting getting the birth control that they need. And then finally, let's talk money. How much will this cost? Do we have any idea at this point? 
So we don't. The company's going to be able to set the price point. So uh, a, a vice president with the company in an earlier media interview um, said that they will keep the price affordable and accessible to all women. And that they'll also have a patient assistance program, you know, for women who can't pay for the pill that'll cover the cost of it. But it remains to be seen. I think that's going to be really important, Amanda. It, it, it can't just be easier to get or more accessible. It has to also be affordable right. to the women that we're trying to reach. And those are often the women who are falling between the cracks where maybe they can't afford to see a doctor or they can't take time off to see, you know, a doctor in order to get a prescription. They have to be able to afford this medication. Yeah, lots of really good information, a uh, lot of really good answers there. Beth Galvin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.